Well, good morning, everybody. Happy July 4th weekend. I know many of you are doing the hard slog at uh, Consim World Expo, a massive wargaming convention in uh, Arizona somewhere. I think it's in Tempe, isn't it? Or Phoenix or somewhere like that. So I hope you guys are having a great time. I uh, once again let that sneak up on me and did not make it. I actually have a ticket to go for three days and I have had it for three years and not been able to get there. So instead of doing that, I'm setting up Sicily Triumph and Folly, uh, the OCS title. And I uh, thought one of the first things I might do in going through a kind of a, a, a blow by blow AAR for this thing is uh, have a look at the terrain, some of the, the location, the key locations that matter in the early game. We'll probably play the campaign. It's uh, just 30 turns, I believe. So, you know, that'll take us a couple of couple of months to get through it, depending on how many distractions we have. And this, uh, the reason why I'm playing this particular title is that it, it falls into the this chronological walkthrough of World War II that I'm uh, working on. I've been pretty heavily involved with the Eastern Front for a while, and I need a little break from that, so... Uh, time to time to dig in to uh, get back onto the western uh, front and see what was going on there. So that's why we're now looking at uh, at the invasion of Sicily. I think that is probably an appropriate uh, appropriate uh, segue into the Western European theater. And I'd like to try and start uh, exploring both the Sicily and Italian campaigns. I've got a couple of other titles that I'll end up playing in the chronological walkthrough, and I don't know how good they're gonna be. Uh, I've actually played this one before. I've got this guy here, so Casino. We'll play Casino for sure. Uh, it's not a bad little game, and I think it'll give us a nice little tactical feel for what's going on in uh, in in sort of the, the meat grinder that became uh, uh, the yeah, the battle for the monastery and stuff like that. And then I've also got uh, this uh, Victory in the West system based uh, title, Anzio Beachhead. And I thought that might be worth having a look at as well, just uh, to see how that all plays out. I have also played Operation Shingle, which I really enjoyed. I think I recently sold that game. Uh, probably for too little as usual. Uh, don't think I'll regret getting rid of it because uh, it's a great game, but uh, I'm done with it and I don't think I'll be playing it again. So there's that. And I think this will give us a big, a bigger picture of, of you know, what's, what's going on with the whole, uh, the whole situation overall. So that's kind of the plan. And then, uh, but anyway, so let's let's focus on. I'm just going to unplug the the power from the phone here, uh, so we can have a look at this map and have a little bit of a talk about it. Now, I've not played any invasion related uh, amphibious landing OCS titles before, and I think this might be one of the only ones. I'm not sure. So, uh, <clears throat> in an effort to kind of get this right off the bat the first time, I have done a little a little reading on the campaign. And uh, into a little review of the rules and whatnot. And the the short story with the amphibious landings is this: uh, there are these uh, NRP locations. They stand for they're basically location points where from which you can, you know, within ten hexes, you can land at various locations and do beach assaults or whatever the case may be. And uh, the the green Discs here represent uh, potential landing locations where there are ports that are going to give us uh, uh, capability to land additional units. So, for instance, this uh, um, now this is actually a difficult word to pronounce. So, I'm trying to look at my Italian, my, thinking back to my Italian, and D O C L E as a as a extension on a word. I'm not sure how we would pronounce that, but uh, this port specifically here is one location, as is La Carta and Gala, which are the two ports, I believe, or the two locations, I believe, the historical landings occurred. 
and then of course you've got the eastern the eastern reaches uh, here where the British landed. So you had the U.S. landing over here and the British over there, and there was a lot of uh, political con uh, conflict between the the two forces in terms of resource allocation and things like that. Probably not as bad as what uh, history has made it out to be. I imagine. I've actually read a couple of campaign uh, write-ups from. Uh, uh, Truska, what was his name? It's not Ulysses. It's uh... anyway. General Truscott ran the third, um, the third division, and I believe he ended up heading over into Palmero and coming across and coming across and coming up the road this way, and then through the mountains as well. Yeah, very tough fighting for his formation. So reading that, you didn't really see too much of the of the conflict, that background, that conflict uh, come up. So I'm not sure how accurate some of this revisionist history is about uh, about Monty and his boys or whoever was running it. Anyway, so one of the challenges we do have is one thing, there's one thing to establish a beachhead and then ensure that uh, that is a secu- has a secure perimeter and we keep the supply and secondary landings uh, uh, going. The, the that's that's one thing. The next thing is how do we how do we push and penetrate in land up through into uh, the Mount Etna region and the heavy terrain, and obviously eventually capture Messina and cut off the German army and prevent it from uh, jumping over to the toe of Italy by ferry over there. And you know how how are we going to approach that? <clears throat> so. One of the things that we want to do in OCS typically is uh, force units to surrender or bleed them out from lack of supply. And so road junctions like this location here, this location here, and some other spots up and up and around the red discs are key places where if we can capture and hold and, and be in supply ourselves, we can really put the hurt on the German forces in order to uh, force them to start making attrition rolls and things like that. that. That's looking at it from the ally perspective. Looking at it from the Axis perspective, well, obviously, you know, we, we, we want to uh, uh, penetrate the perimeter uh, defenses of, of the beach assault. Uh, we've got a couple of strong uh, calf groups and a couple of div- uh, panzer divisions that, that can be deployed, but they need to be deployed very effectively uh, to try and counterpunch against the assault. Uh, and then, obviously, we need to protect our supply, uh, our supply sources, and ultimately make sure that we take enough forces off the board to be used elsewhere in another campaign. Uh, and and achieve our victory conditions, which is basically exiting uh, units off the board. And uh, typically, I think it's uh, complete divisions or or portions thereof that are going to count the most. I, I I read the the rules for this quite a while ago, and now I'm just getting it set up. So I like to kind of read the rules once, let it gestate for a little bit, play some other stuff, then come back to it. So so that's kind of where we're at with this. I'm gonna do today. I'm hoping I'll get this set up. I uh, do. Is, I did purchase this punched, and so it is all in baggies, and it's all in baggy by formation, which may or may not pre- prove useful. And I just realised it's not clipped. Well, that's going to add some time, isn't it? So we'll clip it as we go. This is all a naval craft. A lot of stuff here. There's a lot. It looks there's it looks like there's a lot of units. I don't think there really are that many units here. It's, I don't think it's that big a game. What are we talking here? One, two, three. Eh, eh, there's four counter sheets. It's a few. All right. So that's it. We'll uh, we'll come back when it's all set up and we'll have a look at it. That w- once we see how it's set up, I think that's going to give us a better feel for what where we're going to choose to land. Uh, we also need to uh, take into consideration where the Germans are going to set up. They have to make their own decisions about uh, uh, setup locations as well. There's a lot of flexibility in the setup, if I recall correctly. And we'll kind of go at it from there. So look forward to playing this with you guys. Probably won't be writing up a lot of, uh, uh, taking a lot of pictures and doing AARs and stuff like that. I think I'm going to keep this primarily video-based. 
and I will try and do short uh, crisp updates in the five minute range they won't be nine minutes and 51 52 53 seconds all right talk to you soon bye